My name is Jordan Meyer from Connecticut. Um, I'm a singer, songwriter, producer, and uh, I make music. I'm a songwriter. I've been doing it all my life since I was a kid. Um, I started out started out on keyboard, and then I ended up on drums. I played trumpet for a while. Then my mom sent me to some performing arts school to sing um, guitar. Started playing guitar, and then over the years, I just I learned all these different things, and I just put it all together. And I I'm like a one man band. I produce everything and kind of you know just collaborate all the ideas together and put the songs together and so I always knew deep down inside that this was this was going to be my life I, I believed it you know I didn't just talk about it I knew it so I mean I dropped out of high school you know I didn't care about you know conforming to getting a job or, or sticking in school I, I was just stubborn to the belief that you know Mom, don't worry about it. I, I know I seem like I'm really messing up right now, but it's going to all pan out. So I guess I always knew that my life was definitely going to be be a musical you know, life. I always knew I could make it. So I, uh, I would say I really started believing uh, in the project when I, you know, about two years ago, I kind of reinvented my style. I was making a lot different. I was a... Uh, I had a really different sound a couple years ago, or a few years ago. And what it was, was a, it was a really fake, I think I was putting across an extra effort to sound like something that I wasn't. Um, and I was into like real uh, pop punk kind of stuff like that. And then I was like, wait, I really like, you know, soul. I really like, you know, real serious sounding music. So I, I uh, I started writing my songs differently, I, and I came up with some songs that were really, you know, I, I would say turning people's heads when I would do them live. You know, Jordan was brought to me through a mutual friend in Connecticut, you know, another artist that I knew over the years. And um, just me being a fan of music in general, period, you know what I'm saying? When I first heard Jordan's music, it grabbed me within the first five seconds. So, as soon as I heard it, I was like, yo, I gotta meet this kid, you know what I'm saying? See where his head is at, you know, see what kind of uh, rapport we could build before even trying to, you know, start any business relationship. And that's what we moved forward and doing. Jordan came out, you know what I'm saying? He gave us some of his time, he came to Queens, you know, the heart of the grind, and uh, actually performed for us live. And after that, I was so Live or Die, like, the very moment I made it, I remember when I first laid down the piano chords, something inside of me was moved, like, very, very intensely. I started writing words down. I was like, all right, I see where I'm going with this. I'm talking about, you know, like the bipolar disorder and, and depression issues, stuff like that. And, uh... I was like, wow, I was almost like, should I really like come out with a song like this? This is really putting it out there, you know, it's, but, so I started recording it. I, I laid down a verse and a hook and um, I sat down and I played it and I listened to it and I just, I just knew in that moment, I knew that I had a song that was going to get me somewhere. I just, I just knew it. I remember my mom, gave, uh, my mom got home from work and I, uh, I was like, wow, I, I really think I did it. I think I have a song that's gonna like, get me a career. So uh, a friend of mine, an artist by the name of Big Stat that I, uh, that I work with, who's also from my town in uh, Enfield, Connecticut, he, uh, he knew Havoc through you know, networking and just grinding. And uh, he just randomly sent him the song, Live or Die. And uh, Stat called me that night and he was like, He's like, yo, Havoc from Mob Deep just hit me up about Live or Die. And I was like, what? Because that's like, you know what I mean? Why would Havoc from Mob Deep want to... Why would Havoc from Mob Deep be interested in my music, you know? It all happened extremely quickly. Um, I got the call that night. 
and then he got another call that night, so he called me back and he was like, uh, Havoc wants to know if you can come to the city tomorrow. So I came here that next day, played like five songs, bumped a bunch of beats on my iPod, and uh, Havoc, he offered me a deal that day. So right now, we in here uh, grinding, you know what I'm saying? And this is the fun part, you know what I'm saying? The other, the other stuff is, is easy and, you know, you do it, you, you walk the red carpets and you do all of this stuff. But this is the actual fun part. This is the part that, you know, I live for and I'm sure, you know, Jordan lives for that part as well. But, you know, who am I walking on a couple of red carpets either? We was in this record studio, um, Mob Deep Studio, and uh, we worked on a song called Crush Box. And it was killing. I mean, we, we killed. It was it was really good. Like we, I wasn't expecting for Jordan to sound the way he did. You know what I'm saying? He's just like his vocals is like ridiculous. And oh my God, he's gonna take the world by storm. It's crazy. Y'all guys are here, man. It's gonna be incredible. And look out for him because he's next. Real talk. What well, you got going on with your relationship with your tattoos and, and you know what, what story, kind of story you tell with those guys? Um, basically, I break it down for you. Uh, my left arm is all dedicated to music, and I I brought that out in a way that I compared it to space because I'm fascinated with space and music and space to me are both infinite. I don't I don't think there's an end to it. I think. Like outer space keeps going, I think music keeps going. I don't think there's gonna be a day where we run out of songs or something. So that's the word infinite right there. Um, and that's the earth, and then it goes up. And that was my first hat ever, just that right there. It's a pair of drumsticks for the drums. It's a guitar behind it. Um, obviously music notes, that says music. Then that's my uh, my classic microphone right there to represent my vocals. And then that's just a Freaky ass alien. <laughs> and then um, the, on my knuckles that says one man band. Ever since I was a kid, people say, oh, what do you, what do you play? And I'm like, uh, drums, piano, sing, I do guitar, this and that. And they're like, oh, so you're like a one man band. And it just kind of stuck. So that's why I got that. And then that's my state, Connecticut, 860, baby. And then uh, that's, that's Nike right there because two reasons. Just do it. Motivate yourself. Just get up and do it. Stop talking. Do it. And I'm a sneaker whore. Big time. I'm a pile of Nikes at home. And that's like my hobby is waiting in freezing cold lines at like 6 in the morning for a pair of shoes. And over on this arm, uh, that's my most meaningful tattoo. My best friend was uh, killed in Iraq. And um, I just obviously had to do something. So I went with his, uh, his portrait. But, uh, yeah, he was killed over in Iraq when he was 19. That was like real, real rough point in my life. So I know that we were talking about tats before, and, and you had some meaningful ones. That's that's kind of my deep meaningful one. And then um, that's a key for my girl. She has the same one with my initials on hers. And that is a cactus. And right now it's silly as hell because I have a giant cacti in the middle of this fairly blank arm. But it's actually very meaningful. Um, because I always wanted to see the desert. So like a few summers back, I went to uh, Arizona and I took a souvenir home, literally, like on my skin. So that's about it. No wait, I got a neck piece, two of them. That says rags to riches. And basically what that means to me is, you know, going from a life of really not having much to working on this goal, this music, and trying to have everything that I want. So it's, uh, it's symbolic to, you know, making myself something that I always thought I could be, you know, someone in the music industry. Just to, you know, have somebody that's not scared at all to come from all the way from West Bubble and to perform in front of, you know, one of us, you know, you know, a Mob Deep member, you know what I'm saying, just give it his all. It's like, that, that was enough for me to be like, yeah, I want to work with this kid. I'm a fan of music, first and foremost, you know what I mean? So it don't even matter what genre it is to me, you know what I mean? If it sounds good, it sounds good. Because I'm a music man, I, I love music. It could be pop, R&B, rock, you know what I'm saying? Whatever it is, you know what I mean? If it sounds good to the ear, 
you know, I'm, I'm rocking it, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm playing that, you know, in the car, in the crib, or whatever. So, uh, you know, things happen where, you know, this artist was brought to my attention and I, I couldn't uh, pass up the opportunity to work with something so special. Everything is just gonna fall into place, you know what I'm saying? It's not really much I can say on that aspect, like, yo, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that. I mean, we're gonna do everything that it takes to make sure that Jordan wins.